Mutex locks are software solutions to help in synchronization of processes which wish to enter a critical section. It is short for mutual exclusion. So we have a lock variable which can take two values, 0 or 1. So any process which wishes to enter the critical section will try to acquire the lock. So if the lock is available, that means the value of lock is 0, then the process can acquire the lock. That means it can change its value to now 1 and then enter the critical section. If the value of lock is 1, then that means the lock is not available and the process cannot acquire it. So then in that case, it will keep on waiting for the lock value to become 0. After a process has acquired the lock and manipulated the critical section, it comes out of the critical section and can release the lock by making its value back to 0. So let's see how the basic definitions of acquire and release can be implemented. So let's say we have this variable lock which is initialized to 0 and we have a process 1. This is implementing a basic definition of the acquire and a basic definition of the release lock. So any process which is sharing a critical section with the other processes can implement the same acquire and release lock definitions. So this definition says that while lock is not equal to 0, then you keep spinning. So this semicolon over here says that if lock is not equal to 0, the process has to keep on looping into this while loop and keep on waiting till the value of lock becomes available. But here we can see that the value of lock is 0. So that means this process 1 can go out of this while loop and execute the next instruction and assign a value of 1 to the lock. Once it has assigned a value of 1 to the lock, then it can enter the critical section, manipulate the data and after it has come out of the critical section, again it will change the value of lock to 0 which is release of the lock. Now let's say a process P1 was in the critical section, that means it had acquired the lock it had changed its value to 1 and now it is working in the critical section. Another process 2 now also wishes to enter the critical section. So it will execute this instruction while lock not equal to 0 keep on spinning. So here we see that the lock value is not equal to 0 as another process has acquired it and its current value is 1. So process 2 will keep on looping in the while loop over here. Only when the value of lock becomes back to 0 after the release of the lock by process 1, then only process 2 will be able to come out of this while loop and take the value of, uh, change the value of lock to 1. That means it will acquire the lock and then only be able to enter the critical section. But with the use of these acquire and release definitions, is mutual exclusion guaranteed? Do we say that when one process is in the critical section, the other process will never be able to enter the critical section? Let's see what happens. So again, here are the definitions of acquire and release. Same for another process which is sharing or using the same critical section the value of lock is initially 0. So let's say first P1 executes the instruction while lock not equal to 0. So it is executing this instruction and checking whether the value of lock is 0 or not. The current value of lock is 0. So that means process P1 comes out of this while loop and now it is almost about to execute the next instruction. But before it can do so, there is a context switch over here and P2 starts running. So now when process P2 starts running, it will also check the value of lock over here. Process P1 has not been able to update the value of lock to 1 because it was preempted. 
there was a context switch the value of lock has not changed so the value of lock is still 0 so when process 2 checks this value it sees that the value of lock is still 0 and it comes out of the while loop and now it executes the next instruction and let's say the value of lock is now changed to 1 by process p2 again let's say there is a context switch and p1 starts running p1 was already here at this instruction so p1 also executes this instruction and makes a value of lock equal to 1 so both the processes have changed the value of lock to 1 and both the processes are now about to enter the critical section so we see that by this way because these instructions this checking of the lock and modifying it this was not atomic in nature now both the processes have entered the critical section Th this means that this definition of acquire it has to be atomic only then mutual exclusion can be maintained otherwise if these this acquire definition is not atomic then as we have just seen because of the context switch that takes place both the processes will enter the critical section so this definition of acquire which has to be atomic in nature can be done so by the use of hardware instructions at the machine level so if there is an instruction at the machine level which can ensure that this swapping of the value of the lock will happen atomically then the mutual exclusion can be guaranteed so suppose lock was initialized to 0 now process 1 says acquire and it sends the address of the lock to this function over here now since the pointer is being sent that means this l whatever manipulations are being done over here it will directly be able to manipulate the value of the lock over here so while lock is not equal to 0 spin but lock is equal to 0 over here so this is executed and the contents of the pointer are changed to 1 now the process p1 enters the critical section now in this time now suppose if process 2 wants to acquire the lock and now it sends the address of the lock to the function over here it checks the contents of the lock pointer and it sees that it is e not equal to 0 because the now the value of lock is 1 which has been manipulated by process p1 and so process p2 will continue looping in the while loop till the time the lock value becomes 0 once process p1 is out it will release the lock and make this 0 when process p2 runs this instruction again and now when the value of lock is 0 now process p2 will be able to acquire the lock and enter the critical section so now we can see that only if the acquire definition is atomic in nature then mutual exclusion will be guaranteed the limitation of mutex locks is that it requires busy waiting by one process so if process p1 has acquired the lock process p2 will keep on checking the lock va variable and keep on trying to acquire the lock so this will continue spinning in the while loop over here so this causes or wastes the cpu cycle and this busy waiting is also referred to as spin lock mutex locks are advantages to use if the lock is to be held for a very short duration so if the critical section is very small that means if only a variable value is being incremented or decremented if a very short small uh, uh, operation is required then mutex locks are advantages for use because then the context switch is not required in that case the other process which is waiting for the lock can spin for a few cycles till the time the lock is re released also here by one process which is spinning on one processing core if we are having a multi-core system one process can keep on spinning on one processing core while the other thread is using the critical section on another core so as soon as the process which was using the critical section for a short duration as soon as it finishes the thread was which was spinning can then acquire the lock